Welcome to the Warren Cycling Podcast. My name is Dean Warren. I'm in Sarasota, Florida. And I'm Randy Warren, and I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah, episode 364 of the Warren Cycling Podcast. Uh, yeah, just one away from one a year for you to listen to. It's kind of a magic number, 365 in podcast. It is the 26th of August, and it's the rest day. More importantly, it's the first rest day at the Vuelta España after a brutal start. Not just the parkours, but mostly the heat has just been yeah. really bad. And so I, I know myself, I don't know, is it more so now that I'm getting a little older? But I, I've been, I suffer more, or maybe because I'm not as trained now as I had been. But I see. But you live suffer. in Florida though now, so it seems like you should be more acclimated. Does your Garmin tell you how much acclimated you it are? It does. Or? It does. Yeah, and I, I'm are you 100% very, acclimated? No, oh, no. not anywhere near. Well, because I was away. I'm away from home so much. Yeah. And I do a lot of my riding away from home too. But yeah, I, I really suffer in the heat now more more than ever it seems. But you know what though? I remember when you lived in Florida before you moved to Colorado, and you used to get cramps regularly there. And then you moved to Colorado, and you didn't get cramps anymore. So yeah. it might be the heat and the humidity that bothers you too. Probably so, but yeah. I, I can, I mean, uh, at least the pros have a lot more um, support Mitig in, in yeah, trying to and, cool them out. Go with the and cooling and, strategies, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, the they've ice learned a lot more. Lots of ice socks and they've got, you know, things to keep them cool on a regular basis. But yeah, when they're racing, they're still racing in the heat, but yeah, they, yeah. they do have, and they have a lot of them are wearing the core yeah. body temperature uh, monitors that you attach to your heart rate monitor strap. So they can actually measure their core heart or core body temperature too, so they can make adjustments for that. Because because care pads the first day, the first big climbing day, was that day one, day two, day two, day four, sorry, remember now. day four or day four? Yeah. Yes. Maybe day, day one four. was a time trial. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. So day four. <laughs> I know it's all blurred to me yeah. right now, but he he actually tried to get a bottle from a spectator with like 10k to go or something yeah. like that, which is illegal. But he was so desperate for it, and then he lost a ton of time after he, I think he fumbled the bottle. So um, he was, yeah. And then you saw yesterday, he was, you know, yeah. a, a second place and a strong finish. And so he's, oh, and he's got, he, he had tacked out of the peloton. Yeah, yeah, bridge second place to the he, remnants he, of the break. Yeah, everybody uh, I mean, but that, Yates. His, yeah. yeah, I mean, Yates' effort, I guess, is probably, you know, stronger than Carapaz, but in a way, Carapaz. Was pretty close yeah. to, yeah, it was impressive because because he well, had to go from the the favorites group and yeah. the bridge and then, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it was a different, and again, you know, somebody who is a potential GC threat who had lost a lot of time, but they let him get a huge lead. So Carapaz didn't move up to second. I think he's third or fourth now, right? It was Roglic ended up saving third, him second place. Yeah. But, you know, Carapaz, anyway, he was really strong, obviously. He did, you know, won the polka dot jersey in a stage of the tour. He's been riding really strongly. So when he was suffered, you know, it was kind of a surprise that day. And we thought it was probably the heat. And now you see, you know, it must have been the heat because he's done really well since then. So, yeah, yeah you're right. The heat's been a huge issue. I, I, yeah. I want to say I heard him say it was 40 degrees at one point, which is over 100. 104, 104 Fahrenheit then. Yeah. Oh, no, just, I mean, it's going to get better, I think. Yes, going state. up into the northern the, part of Spain. Yeah, I was wondering, man, why aren't they starting up there first? <laughs> and, but it's probably going to be hot no matter what in the Andalusia and the southern part of Spain, yeah. whether you delay a week or not. But whew, yeah, it's been, it's been really hot. And so you wonder, uh, different riders handle heat differently. I know before, like Teddy Pagaccia had to work pretty hard at getting his, and using that core sensor probably has helped yeah. a lot for him because he used to have his bad days on, on the hot days at the Tour de France before. So, yeah. but, um, so different riders are, are going to handle it differently uh, inherently, but now I guess they do have a little bit better gauge on it with that sensor. So but again, but, that just still just mitigates though. Yeah. The, you know, you're right. I think no matter what, some riders are going to be better or worse in the heat. And so the days are not going to be as well, then they probably race differently than the days, you know, that, that they do work at well. Or if you're a rider who does really well in the heat, that might be a day that, you know, you take advantage of other people's weaknesses those days too. Right. So you got a lot of factors going on here. Primoz Roglic appears to be, of the GC riders, the strongest, but he's got his bad back. And so yeah, that... He didn't yeah, he did ride as strongly yesterday. Yeah. Wow. Yesterday so. he showed some kinks in, uh, up until now. Well, I've been wondering, like, how long is he going to be able to hold out? Uh, how long is his back going to hold up for him? 
I mean, I was impressed. I, I got to the point where before yesterday, I thought, uh, I think he's probably going better than he's leading on to. And yes, he's going to maybe take up a lot, you know, bring back uh, every time they have a lot of hills, he's going to be making up the time that he needs to get back up to the top. And so I was even worried thinking, oh man, a day like yesterday, he's going to like get all, recoup all that time. And then we're not going to have as, as exciting as a race, but no, it didn't happen, fortunately. Yeah. And, and it's gotten even more exciting now with the different riders jumping up in the classification, especially though UAE Emirates, because they lost to Almeida, unfortunately, who I thought was going really well. And yeah, it's COVID still. <sighs> yeah, you, the, day he, the day he lost time, yeah. it seemed odd because the announcers kept saying, why is he riding in the back of the field? Especially when there's other UAE riders in the league group and they weren't riding with him. And they're like, that doesn't really, you, that's not how you protect a leader. So they knew at that point he wasn't feeling good. And he was probably just trying to hold on as much as he could, hoping that maybe it wasn't going to be COVID or he could, you know, maybe get better in a day or two. Right through it. Like, like it wasn't Garrett Thomas riding through COVID in the tour, right? Yeah. If you don't, if you, if your viral load is low enough, you, you don't, you're not, you don't have to stop. You can keep going. Yeah. And if it's not affecting you that much too, because sometimes people have it and, you know, it affects them, but not as, as much. But you could tell though, because the team, if they really thought he was, going to be good for the long haul they would have sacrificed other riders because he was by far the best place to be third place at gc that day you know right. so yeah. so but but they let him flounder on his own and then we saw why the next day with them yeah. start. so yeah yeah crazy so i guess for american fans um well which we are our our focus is is on like sep Kuz because he's the defending champion but um yeah he won in circumstances last year and yeah, he's riding pretty Were you well. You saying he was an unworthy winner last year? Or? No, he is a worthy, worthy yeah. winner, but he he wasn't winning because he was outright probably the strongest rider at the Vuelta. Yeah, he was it just, wasn't riding in dominant in a dominant way. So yeah, so but this year, like Ben O'Connor now, circumstantially is is leading the race, which he might hold on because he's a quality rider. But yeah. He, and he wrote better yesterday. Before, he, he, the yeah. fact that he got four bonus seconds yesterday at the end, I, which I was just listening to, I didn't see it, but I was listening yeah, I to the it. broadcast. It was uh, impressive because that's the first he's fought back against everybody else since he took that lead. Yeah, Felix Gall was a big assist to him yesterday. So yes. That's good to have a strong climber like Gall. He were in the front for so long. He, the whole the whole last climb. Yeah, that group, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So he is a big help, but. Um, Shoot, now I lost my <laughs> my train of thought there. I was going going for there with um Oh, yeah, I guess Sepkus. Like going back to yeah. Sepkus, yeah. Because mm -hmm. because there's the parallels to Sep taking over Lee, but completely different scenario this year. Without but Sep though did draw, draw parallels himself though too to that. So yeah, yeah but the, the team dynamics are, are quite different and yeah. the top riders. So but I can see Sep. I don't know. Maybe he could recoup some of that. He he's not like he wasn't far enough back like Yates or Carapaz was, was he to be able to to get nope. like Adam Yates got it. So he so he doesn't have that of or even Ben O'Connor how far he wasn't that yeah. far back though when They're he was like able to get up the road. Low teens or something like that or high teens or something like that. Yeah, and and, and then so Yates was in the twenties. So yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to imagine that he would still be able to get up the road in a group. But but you never know. I mean, I don't know. Um, uh, Red Bull. Borahans Groa just, you know, really miscalculated, I guess. And and I think they heard a lot because because their our um, second guy, um, Lipovitz, what's his? Florian, Borahans yeah, Gros. Lipovitz, Lipovitz, Lipovitz <laughs> did, didn't probably do as much as he could have in the break. Uh, I was watching the Chris Horner uh, video about it, and each time, like when um, Dan O'Connor was pushing at the front or, or attacking, he was either like dousing his head, looking down, or, like in the back, reaching in his back pocket, getting food. Like, I, I think the biggest um, offense was probably when it was coming up to the bonus second. And he and that would have been a time when you would expect someone looking for seconds would be jumping at, at the front of the of that group, of the um, breakaway group. And he was looking away in the back, like dousing himself and not paying attention at that crucial time when when Ben O'Connor jumped ahead to get the bonus seconds and then and getting up the road. So um, Ben O'Connor yeah. was sitting before he did it, made got his time, he was sitting twenty third. Right. But so, he was about just two minutes back though. One fifty six back. Yeah. 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 
So yeah, anything can happen. Lots of climbing still to come. Um, should be super exciting though, because now Carapaz is rejuvenated. If if he just had some, he said that those earlier stages didn't suit him so well. And, and, and we think he suffered yeah. from the heat more than yeah. Right. So yeah, he could he could really definitely. I mean, like you said, he was riding very well at the um, Tour de France, and maybe um, I don't give him as much credit for winning when he did win the um, Giro d'Italia because it was another kind of a. Uh, top riders looking at each other and letting him get away and not pay he still attention did but, that, yeah. but he still yeah. did yeah so so and, and he is a guy that it keeps seems like so many times he's attacking and um fizzing out fizzling out <laughs> he'll attack anyway but even though maybe he's not the strongest and, and trying to get uh, up the road and then he'll right. go and then he'll fizzle out and get caught so but i mean i, I guess it's kind of exciting to see him put forth that but maybe it's not the, the smartest way to race? I don't know. I don't know. But but the way, she went, like yeah. going for the in the tour, he got the polka dot jersey out of it and a stage win. So I think that that attacking style, even knowing that you know, he's going for broke, either he's going to win the stage or lose it, and more often than not, he loses it. But he, once in a while, he wins it. So um, yeah, just look yeah. real quick. Yates was twenty seventh, nine twenty seven back before yesterday. Yeah. So that they moved that, up twenty places. Yeah, and you can so that's that that you can leave you can you know it's hard you know I mean so, so there's a lot of people between there George Bennett yeah. is, is in there Seth Kuss is in there yeah so Seth um, Kuss is eight sixteen now back yeah he kind of looked back how far is he behind O'Connor and how far is he behind Rogue like I kind of have to look at both yeah. so yeah. so I don't yeah. know if they I don't know if they would let I mean you can't watch everybody no. yeah. so. You know, Who's so the biggest it, threat? Maybe they wouldn't see him as a big, bigger threat. I mean, Skelmos lost, you know, five spots yesterday in the GC, and Rodriguez for Arkea, Christian Rodriguez lost five spots too, but they're still ahead of Seth, though. Right. So, you know, I, I, I would think that George, uh, I don't know. So I think, you know, so, so I don't know. So Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to have to watch and see. Huh? Yeah, Skelmos are going to be less marked than Seth would just because he's a defending champion. But George Bennett is two spots behind him. Uh, you know, Ben Ben Ed, Ed Belt, you know, we talked about him too. Yeah. He's shown he can climb, although it's interesting that he didn't slough off his giveaway stage <laughs> to real quick, no, but no. but um but certainly you know he might have a chance to so I mean a lot of people there go go do um yeah and then Carlos Rodriguez, Felix Gall. You know, there's a lot of people <laughs> who could be a strong on a, on a climbing stage and make up a lot of time. Yeah, and you can't mark everybody. So no. both the Kathleen Ajdazer is trying to mark people. You know, Red Bull and Bora Hansgrohe is trying to mark, mark people. Right? It's right. It's, yeah, those those two are like the teams that are kind of like in the driver's seat in a way. Yeah. Because uh, Red Bull Hansgrohe Bora Hansgrohe has maybe the strongest rider with a bad back. And Decathlon, Azure, um, yeah. Le Mondial. And, and, and Eric, Enric Maas. As a leader, and, yeah. Oh, Maas is impressive. Yes. And, in and more Mc, ways than one. Yeah, and, and Mc, Mc, Mikel Landa, two oh. perennial, maybe podium yeah, contenders. Yeah, but, hopeful, so yeah. But, but yeah, bridesmaids, can, 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 you know, always, are sitting fourth and fifth, you know? Yeah. And they're both riding really well. Although I think Maas, he, riding away from the... The GC contenders yesterday, even though he got caught right towards the end, still showed that he's attacking for one thing, which he hardly ever does. Right, right exactly. And, yeah, and he rode away. And I think if you know if it would have been a summit finish, you know he would have got time, of yeah. course. So you but, think um, he wasted energy by trying to ride away then, or you think it's a a good psychological? Um, I think it's worth the psychological, especially with the rest day. You know, yeah. so he, he did waste some energy, but he showed he could climb. He's definitely someone they need to watch on the climb. Um, and I think for himself, too, because, again, he's not an attacking rider. He generally follows people because he doesn't maybe have the confidence that he can right away. So now this gives him some confidence. So hopefully it'll make him more aggressive with his riding style. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good thing. And fortunately, he's handling his bike well, too, as he whew, he said a gust of wind blew his wheel. Yeah. Like, that's, that seems crazy. That... And, he, and he, the quote was, it, it looked worse than it was, but... I don't think so. I think it looked as bad as it was, but maybe it didn't feel as bad as it was. Maybe he didn't as experience it as bad as it looked, but I think it was as bad as it was. He just did a 
got really lucky or a remarkable probably a balance between he's a good bike handler and he just knew kind of how to handle it and, and he had a space a space to get under control to the right well, side of the road that just yeah. had happened to appear at that point instead of just the guardrail and and down yeah because yeah, he was not under control in the, in the dirt and barely stopped before the guardrail came back too so. right and then just got himself going but i think his chain got stuck there and he did yeah, yeah and he, put he it back already on. lost some Rolling. time on the descent but that pretty much killed everything but then he caught jay vine again and then because jay, he was riding with jay vine at the time who wasn't chasing because his teammate at, you know and mates was off the front but but jay vine then they said that once that he, he got recaught by moss hung behind Moss, like almost like he was more afraid than Moss was because he he saw what had happened there so um yeah, it, yeah. it's it's been a good exciting race and and the attacking style not having one dominant person there we don't have a pagacha there to you know just make the race almost moot you know and with o'connor having still 353 on second place it doesn't feel like he's in command of the race you know yeah, so exactly yeah, it's a, it's it's good and exciting. And and well, we have 10 12, 12 more stages. No, but there's oh, some how many finishes. more summit finishes? Lots Total. Yeah. yeah. So many. I was at 7 or 10 or something like that, but but yeah, it's And like, then the last day time trial. So Yeah, last day time trial, which it could come down to that, you never know. Yeah. So I'm looking, looking at the top to Yeah, I'm looking at the top of the table yeah. like no one time trials that well besides Roglic, so Roglic, yeah. Yeah. Roglic, Roglic because if it was if Joe Almeida still up there, yeah, okay, Joe Almeida's got a good time trial. Or, but Ben O'Connor actually is a pretty decent time trialist too. So he's not, you know, I think he's better than Kevin like, Boss, yeah. Landa. Yeah. But Yates can do a good time trial. He's done a good time trial in the yeah. past. Yeah. Gall, not so much. Rodriguez has done okay. Yeah, you've got to go down to Skelmos, who's a good time trialer. Right, right. But Sepp's not a good time trialer. No. Yeah. I would say, just real quickly, I'd say Roglic, then maybe O'Connor, then Skelmos. Who was, who was or still, maybe you know, Skelmos 70. better than O'Connor, yeah. But yeah. He's so far back. Yeah. So it, you know, it, it's, it'll be all to play for. I think hopefully that last day will be exciting that, you know, we'll, we'll see what yeah. happens. But yeah. yeah, you know, you've got a lot of guys who might be in the top five losing out on a podium spot potentially or gaining a podium spot based on the time trial. So Matthew Riccatello had a oh. great ride on the fourth stage and he was looking really solid, but then he's had some struggles. He had a crash, so yeah, but crash. he lost some time, and then he lost some time again yesterday. He's trying to treat the race. He has no pressure from his team, and they're all pretty excited about him. Trying to still treat the races like he's racing for GC to try to be up there every day to get that experience. But now he's 40, 40 some minutes behind. I, I, I'm more hoping that he can get in a break. I guess, I don't know, would that be racing for GC to get in get in a break on one of these big climbing days and, and show how well he climbs to yeah, win so a stage? 43rd place, 41.59 back. Yeah. So he's not a threat for the GC. And so um, it'd be interesting to see because we see, you know, Yates, who now has become a threat for the GC, race much differently, certainly, than Roglic's racing. No one's let Roglic get off in a break, right? But um, so I guess you know, there's different ways to race the JC, GC. You can be conservative and just stay with the leaders, you know, Miguel Linderman approach, or you can be aggressive and try and, you know, take time back. So hopefully Rick Tell was looking for that. And I think, too, like we've seen before, people say, oh, I'm fine after the crash, you know, no big deal. But they don't race frequently very well. Yeah. yeah, afterwards. And so Rick Tell has had a couple of climbing stages after the crash he's lost time on. And he's a rest day now. So my hope is that he recovers some and then starts riding, riding sure. well again. And maybe um, heat is affecting him too. That's another factor yeah. that could be hurting him. What about Brandon McNulty? Now he's lost tons of time. Yeah. We're hoping he could have been maybe a possibility for overall. Um, it seems like he would be perfect for a breakaway. But now he's got Adam Yates to, yeah. to work I think for. It's Perfect for a breakaway, but in in that role where you're waiting, kind of like up the road in case year. they, yeah, yeah. Right, right. And then, but then if if you don't need him, then he can go for the stage win. So All he's right. kind of there with the intent to help Yates or Almeida, maybe or not Almeida, Almeida but um, yeah. Del Toro, sorry, or right. you know 
with Del Toro Yates that maybe could bridge up to him, um, but also with the option of of going for a stage win. He's, he's he's riding really well still too, and I think he hasn't faltered necessarily because of fitness, but he's been doing work and stuff too. And yeah, I think it's the plan. Yeah. The, right, the plan never was for him to go for GCs, right. yeah. and he's not riding that way. So yeah, which maybe is yeah. a mistake <laughs> because. They ended up maybe could have used him for GC, so maybe. And then Riley Sheehan, the fourth American there, he's just his big goal is to get to Madrid and yeah. get the experience to get that Grand Tour as like. So he he moved up three spots. So yesterday <laughs> he he's sitting pretty far well down there, uh, hour thirty eight back in one forty second place overall. Yeah. So I'm just hoping he'll stay out of danger, get through get through the race, and maybe I don't know what other chances he was going to be there for helping Corbin Strong on the more transition or flatterish stages as their faster finisher. But with um, King Groves and especially Walt Van Aert, it's going to be hard to get past one of those two. Although, um, who was the DSM rider that got the win? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it was a surprise for well, sure. Well, he went at Tour Burgos, but yeah. Yeah, he's he, he won about the bike three. throw. He, yeah, he won yeah. because um, oh, Van Aert got a little confused, didn't, didn't see the finish line so well, and threw his bike too early. Oh, I thought that he, the lighting. He didn't see the finish line as right, and he threw his bike a little early. I thought though, Walt threw his bike after second. I mean, I, I thought in the, I looked in the video. He threw it twice. Because he, no, he threw it twice. twice. Yeah. Oh. Through to early than so yeah. Matthias back Vasek. So uh, that, that was a uh, different. Not Vasek. Vasek didn't win a stage. Vasek oh, got sorry. second. That was, that was second to Bittner. Is it Bittner? Look at the wrong stage. Stage six, seven, six, seven, seven. No. It was a stage that that and actually too. So they they were you know he was Walt Walt the one that Walt won was. Very much saying yeah, Pavel that, Bittner. Yeah, saying it was up to Sepp to, to help him get it. Yeah, stage yeah, five. From, from yeah, from Yeah, Bittner. So yeah, yeah, but it, yeah, huh? So I didn't really. I just I just looked at the throw at the finish and Bittner threw before Walt did, but maybe Walt threw his bike and then threw it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he won by six. They says like six centimeters. It was the width of his wheel, so yeah. it, it was it wasn't as close as it looked at first on TV. No, yeah. But wins a win. Oh so, my gosh, uh, yeah. And, and yeah. he's he was uh, he was a stagiaire last year, I think. So he um let's see, yeah. Uh, no stagiaire in twenty two. So stagiaire yeah. in twenty two and then he went to the world tour level in twenty three. But yeah, but he's you know, he's he's come from not nowhere, obviously. He's twenty one years old. I thought he's twenty three, twenty one years mm-hmm. old. So yeah, it's it's heady stuff when you beat Walt Van Art in a sprint. And especially when Walt Walt's Flying right now too, and he's he's finally found his his good form again, and and that was just, a stage. Oh, okay. so, I was just glad when Walt won his second stage, we didn't get that arm swinging, arm swinging celebration. <laughs> that would try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's, it, you know, it, it's it's and there's not that many sprint stages too, so there's not a lot of sprinters here. Um. I think it's it's definitely ripe for people who aren't used to winning sprints to win some sprints. Right. Well, Walt well, wanted to help set yesterday's stage, but he was it was too hard. <laughs> he yeah. said it wasn't able to do it. So I I didn't I wanted to watch I tried to watch all of Chris Warner's videos because I like to get his take on it. And his headline was about Sep being the best teammate, you know, to help him when yeah. and yeah i know he wants to pay back up sometime and he'll have another chance so but you know for your for this one lisa bike they're having nowhere near the season as last year especially at the grand tours and steps not probably where they would like him to be but wow it still won two stages already and had the jersey a day so for most teams oh yeah that's that's all right. Okay, that's like, yeah. and he and he's the points jersey holder right now, and if all goes well, should hold that. So well, it was that's amazing. A pretty good tour. 
yeah, when when the stage that he won that Seth helped him so much on too, he was basically the only sprinter left in the in that group. It was a small group and a group another group started coming back on there and then Seth went to the front and drove the pace real hard and, and kept another group come, from coming up. So uh, so it was amazing that Walt though was yeah. able to Yeah, but did you see when he jumped how much he gained on everyone? Yeah. So fast. I mean he was just like flew smart. by yeah. <laughs> No, I'm just no saying, though, if, yeah. if it wasn't, I mean, it's amazing that because no one else of his caliber of sprinter was able to be in that group. Yeah. And so that does give Sepp hope that he'll be there. And even yesterday, he was there for, for a while, but it was, a, you know, three cat one climbs yesterday. So it was pretty, yeah. pretty hard for a while. But I think he made it over the first one and then up to the base of the second one and then pulled the plug there. But, but um, yeah, I think that, you know, he's always going to be helpful to Sepp no matter what, just because he's, a good team worker and he can climb much better than the average all arounder, you know? So, right. so he's not going to be in the high mountains with Seth to be able to pace him up unless he drops back from a break, which he couldn't do as well. Right. But um, yeah. I think Jan Outerbrooks has been a little disappointing. I thought maybe he would be a little bit better. He's, and... He thought he'd be better. I saw an interview or an article about him saying he doesn't know what's going on, but he's doing much worse than he thought and he would be. Steven Kreis, like he just hasn't been, He's not climbing. Quite well. as climb, yeah, quite as yeah. well as his he's strong, past. but just not right. He's not the Giro d'Italia leading climbing that he showed multiple years ago. Yeah, well, should be a lot of excitement still with the Volta with 12 more stages, and yeah, it's gonna hopefully be kept in the balance until the very end. Yeah, I mean, really, you think about it, the Giro is not in question after day two. <laughs> <laughs> And the tour was not in question after day, what, four or five, you know? Yeah, I so, mean, stage 11 when Jonas beat Pogaccia. And, right, it had a little hope, a glimmer of hope there, maybe. Yeah, give it a thought, yeah. So, this one, though, in question from day one. We don't know. Right? Yeah. That's oh, good. I like it. Yeah, and already an American uh, stage winner and red jersey holder, at least in the first stage, so. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, first right. American red jersey holder since... Last year? Last year, yeah. <laughs> we don't get to say that very often. No. Yeah, well, I was looking at all the other races going on, and there was a lot, a lot through yeah. the weekend, but right now, not nothing much. I mean, Bulgaria, not, nothing I haven't really looked at much. The Lidl um, Deutschland Tour, Mads Pedersen took that one. Was Zoe it? Dyer got a, got, a, got a second place finish. Yeah, Luke Lamperti got third though on stage four at the Little Deutschland Tour. Oh, so, I didn't see that yet. Okay, yeah, I'm so that's that right. right. Now. Yeah. Yep. Um, Magnus Sheffield Mar- wasn't he like top uh, the Bretagne One Day Classic? The Mark Hirschi, Mark Hirschi, man, he's been <laughs> riding yeah. really well. Yeah, say, say Mark Hirschi. Yeah, he's he's, he, he's so he's 24, I think. Um, let me look real quick. 26. Oh, 26. Oh, okay. Yeah. But he said it's time for him to step up. He has good form, and he needs to. If he's going to be the rider he wants to be, he needs to be good. So he'd be, you know. Uh, so uh, yeah. Paul well, Paul Magner was it three? Second, how many years ago? Three? Some years ago when he was in winning a couple stages of the tour, like really yeah. two stages. Going, yeah. 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 But maybe and, Magnus Court, Arnold Lee, Thibaut Nice, Nice, who has been nice, killing it too. Yeah. Michael Matthews. So he it was a quality field, right? Sheffield was twelfth that day. But, okay, twelfth. You know, I knew he was somewhere up there, but yeah. Yeah, and and Hershey had a one second gap, so I don't know if he held on to an attack there at the end, or he just was so fast he gapped everybody by a second. <laughs> so, um, the course was lumpy at the end, but not 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 flat, but not mountainous. So a lot of little lumps. He maybe he grabbed. They finished on a downhill, so maybe he grabbed a lump. You know, lead over the last little lump, which yeah. is only a few kilometers to the finish. So maybe that's right. it. Yeah. I didn't look uh, to see if I could see that the video from that. I saw that. I kind of wanted to see if I could search out the video, but it's hard to see. The Renui tour, what did that used to be called something else? I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll look back a few years. Got a pretty good start list there. Quinn Simmons is going to race for Little Trek. But Tim Miller, uh, Matteo Vanderpool, Jasper Philipson, Benny and Gourmet, Olaf Coy, so some big sprinters, Arnold Lee, 
uh, Magnus Sheffield's going to be racing there. Garrett Thomas, Philippe Ogana, uh, Arnold DeMar, we'll mention him a little bit later. Sam Bennett, so a lot of good sprinters. I'm thinking it used to be another race, and I'm going to see if I can go back. Yeah, I thought they had much. history in there, too, but I don't see... I don't see the history there. Yeah, I'm trying to go back to different years. The Benelux Tour. It was called them back in 2022, the Benelux Tour. Yeah. Doesn't help a whole lot, though. And it was a Bink Bank Tour back in 2020. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so That sounds more familiar. It was the Ineco tour back in 2016. Yeah. yeah. So, oh. yeah. Okay, that's that race. Renault tour. It was the Ineco tour for a lot of years. Yeah, I mean, just a lot of stuff coming up, too, because World Championships are at the end of September, too. Hey, I got the trip to Zurich. Yeah. Oh, I'm good. You got there. it already? Yep, I got All the right. trip already. I'll be in Zurich. All right. Yeah. I think they were already touting that Remco and Tade were going to be racing against each other there, and then also at the Lombardia right. too. And so. that's my other my other hope to get to that one this year too. Yeah, it's funny because like you know Jonas Vindegaard said that he's done racing for the year, he's tired, yeah. he, he's all. But I think more importantly, his second child's getting ready to be born, so that's probably more important. But then Remco, they had showed he'd done a 200k, I think, it wasn't huge climbing, but like three or four. Uh, thousand meters of climbing, so which is still a lot of climbing, but but you know, in, yeah. in 120 miles, not quite as much too. But he's he's riding more than ever, and and Vinegar was saying, no, I'm I'm bad enough for the year. So it's interesting how youth and not having as bad of a crash, but also having a child too coming, yeah. uh, makes yeah. a big difference for sure. But it'd be great to see them race again. I, I think they're not going to race together again until the World Championships and then Lombardia. But those will be a couple good races close together to see see the clash of the titans. Sure. Uh, what which race did you say Chloe Duggar got second in? Was it a one day race? It was a one day. Yeah, one day race, French right? race. And it was interesting. I read I read a little bit about it. It was a dynamic race. Uh, somebody went off the front, and and then Chloe and the eventual winner. <laughs> I need to look it up real quick here, but um, we were chasing, and and it was basically without Chloe, she said she never would have been able to win the race because because Chloe was a, a, you know, she's a huge motor, obviously too, and then. Chloe attacked, I think, with like a kilometer to go or something like that, over a little rise and got a little gap, but then, but then got caught and passed just at the end. So, um, but the good thing I think was about that was that Misha that, uh, Bredewald. The what? It was Misha Bredewald. Misha Bredewald. Yes. Works. The yeah, yeah. The Dutch rider. Yeah. Yeah. So Dan so Lippert was enough. third. Elisa Balsamo fourth. So is yeah some other big names there for sure. Yeah. It was, it was it was it was a hard race at the end too. So it was a, it, it it came apart at the at the top end of the race, you know. So that which is always you know you know people are working hard and like I said it was a little lumpy, so people were attacking uh, and stuff too. So but it was good to see that Chloe was mixing it up because oftentimes she'll you know go hard off the front and then if she doesn't stay off, she has more trouble negotiating the finish. But here she she's still young yeah. enough; she can do a lot oh, yeah. more racing as she can just stay healthy and. Yeah, be a, be a force and yeah, be someone for us Americans to cheer for in the women's field. But yeah. Yeah. She's 27. Um, yeah. She's she's certainly one of the excuse me, no question one of the strongest racers in the in the world and and she's a favorite for the World Time Trial Championships again in, in Zurich too. So she you know might be able to do that. But um, but yeah, she's had a tough challenge. But luckily she is still racing at the highest level and doing well. So maybe she can come back and continue to, to continue right to, to do better and i think she's is planning on uh, 2028 with a team pursuit or you know too maybe in 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 la so if she keeps racing at that high level for that then it makes sense for her doing a road calendar as well sure yeah but real quick, speaking about the world championships and her repeat, possibly repeating as world champion uh remco evanpool if he wins the european Ooh. championships i think he'll be the first person ever to hold the olympic, olympic? World Championship and European all in the same time. Same, uh, wow. same time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about Remco on my ride today for some reason about how he's not the best of the best climbers like a Teddy Picacho or Jonas Vingo, but his time trialing skills 
and his ability to to, to break away and use his time trial skills to, in a solo effort yeah gives gives him a, a big bump to be you know one of the best riders he just a little bit held back right now by some of his less than stellar climbing days so yeah and Tade's probably in that same ballpark time trialing and you know and, and breaking away they're interesting there because they're different you know Remco's a lot more compact of a rider um thought he's a little bit more of a natural climber I think but also such a good time trialist too I maybe yeah Roglic is more big a bigger version of Remco or something like that in terms of his build I bet Taddy's yeah but, but Remco I think and Taddy have the advantage on the fast finish which and makes they them better riders. So, but although, they, yeah, but they can they can sprint out of a small group at the end of a hard stage, I think too. Roglic though is pretty good at sprinting at the end of a hard stage too. No, so. no that's right. No, Roglic and and, and yeah. uh, I think Roglic and and Pogacar are the fastest. Far better than Remco, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Remco's not. He's gotten better, but not as better fast. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's interesting, you know, and then in, in, then they always have at the end of those hard stages too. People get surprised on a regular basis too in sprints because you think, well, it's going to be for sure this person, that person, that then we see that being upended often. So, which is great again. So, it makes the racing interesting, right? Sure. All right, let's kind of tick off the rest of the boxes of things we thought about talking about, and you got Lauren Stevens right behind yeah. you on your uh, wallpaper, who. You told me won the, um, which is the unofficial, unofficial not gravel. the UCI Gravel World yeah. Championships, which has been held in Nebraska as for many years, right? They've just kind of yeah. been going on for a while there. Yeah. So Lauren's had a great year. I mean, she just won, I think, Steamboat before that. And she's, yeah, she's having a great, great season this year. Yeah. So, and it's, so it's 150 miles. It's very long. So, uh, she, you know, Lauren Stevens took her almost eight hours, 757 for that one, and um, she's 37 it, now. And they they started uh, the women the the trend now is to start the pro women separately than the pro men. So they did that this course, you know, and, and Lauren even said I enjoyed the women's only start. You know, we got our own race, and it was definitely different than what she's used to. So yeah. um, it's good, you know, they do that too, and they, they added 10 more thousand dollars. In prize money, all of it, I think, going to the women. And each woman in the top 20 got at least $500. Oh, so great. It was, yeah. Worth the so while for going there. Yeah. Or the, so it's, it's, it's providing $500 for each woman in the top 20 to arrive at the second race checkpoint ahead of riders in the general field. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. It's, 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 it, and this is a race, too, that, so I think, Garmin in the past has been a Garmin, the Garmin World Championships. I'm not sure if it's, they still sponsored it this year or not, but um, it's been going on for a long time. You're supposed to get a tattoo if you want it. That's like one of the prizes. And I remember the first time someone didn't get one, the 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 diehard, you know, OG gravel people were all like, "Oh my gosh, you know, you know, you that's, don't enter this race if you don't want to get the tattoo if you don't win it." So um, yeah, it's not, you know, it's it's much longer than what the UCI race is. It's got a little bit different history to it. Not as many European pros come over for it, but it still has a lot of prestige. And so, um, you know, it gets a lot of attention. Yeah, you can go to gravel-worlds.com and get the full scoop on it. That's their website, Garmin Gravel Worlds. But yeah. Actually, there's not a lot on the website. There's some. <laughs> I'm just looking at the top because they didn't update it. It says, see you at the uh august 21st 25th 2024 so okay. they, have, they have an update it's a pretty good article in cycling news so if you want to read about it there you can yeah okay that and i was oh, also too, real quick. i'm sorry heidi franz just speak of gravel for a second heidi yeah. franz got second place in in a uci gravel race so the there's the uci series which qualifies you for worlds and there was the race in sweden i think and and ID, who's a U.S. racer who I helped support in Knoxville a couple of years ago, got second place in a sprint, I think. So um, it's nice that that's getting a little bit of coverage as well now, too. Excellent. I just saw the transfer list. And I know I'd heard before about the the um, Van Dyke, is the Van Dyke brothers, the twins, Nick and oh. Tim. 
the race for uh, Visma Lisa bike that they're transferring. Both yeah. of them? Mick and Tim are both going to Red Bull Bor Hansgrohe. Uh -huh. Yeah. But the Visma Lisa bike's picking up Victor Campaneris. He's coming over from. Oh, so from I had, yeah, from Lada, I hadn't yeah. seen that. Yeah, those are yeah. a couple That's of interesting good. transfers. Andreas Kron is going to UNOX Mobility too. So uh, let's do the birthday list because we want to get it in. Well, we got an hour. <laughs> last time, oh. our last uh, week, we we went over to the next day, uh, European time, which gave us a different list. So really today, still on the 26th of August, we got a birthday list. It's uh, huge um, today too, huge, huge list. Oh yeah, well, a lot of people that we're familiar with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and we've even talked to a couple of them. So, uh, Arno Dumar, top on the list, 33. Yeah. Uh, he's got like double the second place, which is Chris Boardman Chris, in points. Chris Boardman, I know, who is extremely successful. Our, 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 you know, I always feel like Armand, Arnaud, Arnaud Dumar <sighs> didn't quite fulfill his potential, although he's won, you yeah. know, Mount San Remo. But well, yeah. Still, it seemed like he, he could have been even better than he is right now, too. But yeah, when you look at the point total, how much further ahead he is from someone like a legend like Chris Corbin, then you realize he's had more success than we give him credit for. Or yeah, I, give him credit for. I, I saw the like the total victories list of where everybody, how many riders like have gotten over 100 victories, and I had to look for it again. But I was surprised. I, Mark Cavendish is second on the list. And... No. Merckx is first. Second. Yeah, Merckx is first with like 500 or whatever. And then Mark Cavendish is like 165. Is <laughs> like a, a big difference? But I was surprised some of the riders that were high on the list, of, like Marcel Kittel, who retired kind of early, and thought, I was like, ah, oh, he still had a lot of wins. <laughs> he was still yeah. so like Arnold DeMar is kind of like, I'm thinking about that. I don't know how many wins he had, but um, total wins. I, it's on pro cycling stats somewhere. So check out that list sometime. It's kind of interesting right. to see. Yeah. Um, yeah, because like Teddy Pagaccia and Primoz Roglic almost like neck and neck, like 70 to 80 some wins. So they're not in the 100 win club, but of course. Including, including Roglic, fast, though. Yeah, Roglic doesn't have as many years ahead of him as as um, yeah. Pagaccia. So, yeah. So, uh, number three on the list, though, Corinne Lebecki. Yeah. So she's so going to retire. Announced her retirement, too. Yeah, she's she's that? Like, 32. So it's kind of, you know, Taylor, my son, is going to be 32 this year. And so I went to like some national championships um, back when he was 18 in, in Bend, Oregon. And Corinne Lebecki was, of course, there winning. And now she's retiring. And Lawson Craddock was also winning there. And he's yeah. retiring as well. So it's kind of interesting to see these riders now. Corinne has Taylor. Got like 72 national championships or something like that, too. So including one this year, she won the Crit National Championships again this year. Maybe she's, a little more, maybe 76. Yeah, she's got a lot. In my head, sure. yeah, in the 70s. Yeah, she's, but her biggest win probably has to be the um, Ronda yes. Flandre, huh? Yes, yep. Yeah. yeah, you know, like her first or second year of racing, too, so. And then the Tofia. The, uh, Alfredo uh, Binda. Yeah. Alfredo Binda, yeah. That was too. a big one, too. And right, London Classic, so those are. Just not a lot of good wins. Huge wins, yeah. So happy birthday, Corinne. Yeah. Um, Chad, Chad Haga's yeah, birthday. Chad Haga's birthday. 36. He's he's still racing gravel, and he's a former Giro d'Italia stage winner and supported yeah. um, a pink jersey winner. Um, yeah. What else did I see here that's jumped out? Well, Joss Van Aert, no one under. Joss Van Aert, sixty-two. Yeah. So, uh, he's he's uh, his nephew is Walt Van Aert, so yeah. it's Walt Van Aert's uncle, yeah. yeah. And he raced for PDM, uh, so yeah, Walt's got uh, a lot of a lot of people in his family race bikes, <laughs> so. yeah. Uh, look like uh, Ethan Vernon, he's just 24, he rides for Israel Premier Tech. Wow, Israel Premier Tech's got pretty good roster now, don't they? Yeah. Ethan Verna won a stage at the Volta Catalonia a couple of years ago and the stage at the Tour of Romandy and Deutschland Tour. So then, uh, he won a stage at the Alps Maritime Duvar this year. So he did get a win this year, but a lot of his wins were in 2022, 2021. But at 24, he should have some good years ahead of him. Tanner, Tanner Brown's uh, birthday, 27 years old. Or 
Pretty Rider. Too, so yeah, Rick and Rider. Sarah Probably Conrad's time. 57. I guess it's okay to say the women's ages, but they're on the list. Birthday list, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of them are proud that they, you know, it's not like I think I think age. See, when you when you're trying to look younger than you are, then it, it, you don't want people to know how old you really are. But a lot of these women are probably pretty fit, and guys are pretty fit too. So for sure. Yeah. All right, that's gonna be a wrap for the Warren Cycling Podcast 364. Thanks, Randy. It's good to catch up with you. Kind of late notice to put this one together, but glad you're available. And we'll talk to you, I hope, again soon. Maybe maybe next week before I travel again. I've got a couple-week trip going to the Canadian Rockies right after Labor Day. So It's been, been too long since you've had a vacation, right? So. Yes, <laughs> uh, but that's that's I'm using up all my vacation. I took two weeks trying to get out of the Florida heat because I'm not adapted well to riding here. Because <laughs> you don't <laughs> so, spend enough time there. So. <laughs> I know it's catch twenty two. So I'd rather just get out and not worry about adapting to the heat. Yeah. yeah. Well, I right. think, yeah, I, I have trips to Gearing, Nebraska, uh, for gravel national championships. And then so they to, have the world championships and the national championships yeah. in the same state. Yeah. All in Nebraska. Yep, and then uh, I'll be in Maryland the week after that. A lot of that. gravel roads there probably don't they have, huh? Yeah, I guess. I've been there, yeah. I was supposed to go last year, and I tested positive for COVID the night before I was supposed to fly out, so I didn't get to fly out. But, um, yeah, and then I've got Maryland. I'll be in Maryland for the Grand Fondo Nationals, and then back here for a Southeast Gravel Race after that, too. So so there's a lot of racing going on domestically, too, depending upon what kind of things you're, you're looking, to, looking to get in. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Randy. Talk to you later. Thanks, Dean.